Hi folks, this is Jay. Hope you're okay today. It's good to be with you. And uh, we're just doing a Bible study and I uh, hope it's a blessing to you today. Father God, uh, we come before you today and we give you the praise and we give you the glory and we give you the honour today and we acknowledge that you are our King and that you are our God and we praise you and worship you and give you the glory today. And we pray as we look at your word now that you bless each one of us, that we would all know your love and grace in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So if you turn to Ephesians chapter 3, Ephesians chapter 3, We read, For this cause I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ, for you Gentiles, if you have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God which has given me to your word, how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery, as I wrote afore in a few words, wherein where you read you may understand and may my knowledge in the mystery of Christ, which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men, as it is now revealed unto his own apostles and prophets by the Spirit, that the Gentiles shall be fellow heirs of the same today and partakers of his promise in Christ by the gospel, wherein I was made a minister according to the gift of grace of God given unto me by the effectual working of his power. Unto me who am less than the least of all the saints is the grace given that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ and to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the world hath been hid in God, who created all things by Jesus Christ, to the intent that now unto the principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of God, according to the eternal purpose which he proposed in Christ Jesus our Lord, in whom we are boldness and access with confidence by the faith, of him wherein I desire that you faint not at my tribulation of you, which is your glory. For this cause I bow the knee unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might by his Spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that you be rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height, and to the know of the love of Christ which passes knowledge, that you might be filled with all the fullness of God. Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us, unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. Amazing uh, passage of scripture, um, absolutely amazing. Um, Pamela Faith, or Paloma Faith, wrote this, Only love, only love can hurt like this, only love can hurt like this. Must have been a dead kiss, only love can hurt like this. We can all go through uh, stresses and strains in relationships, and we can all go through that and wonder where God is in the midst of our struggles. But in the midst of our struggles, God has three things for us today. Number one, the grace of God for you. Um, in Ephesians 3, 7, wherein I was made a minister according to the gift of grace of God given unto me by the effectual working of his power, Ephesians 3, 7. According to the gift of the grace of God given unto me by the effectual working of his power, God gave the Apostle Paul the grace, the mercy of himself in the gospel, and then he was to go and preach it. Now imagine a church, a, a, a hospital without nurses and doctors. Imagine a fire engine without a, a fire station without fire engines. Imagine an army barracks without the army. You know, a hospital needs nurses, a, a, a fire station needs fire firemen and fire equipment, uh, a, an army barracks needs an army. 
and you ask the question, what is the church? What is the church to be doing? The answer is, the church equals preaching the gospel of grace. That is what the church is to be doing, preaching the gospel of grace. Paul saw his task of being a channel of God's grace to men, William Barclay. C.H. Spurgeon said, I am bold to tell you that my master riches of grace are so unsearchable that he delights to forgive and, and forget enormous sin, the more glory to his grace. Any sin that you and I have committed, it is forgiven under the gospel if we repent and turn to him. What is the church to do? It is to preach the unsearchable mercy, grace of God. That is what the church is to do. That is what the church is to be doing, preaching the gospel of grace. And so in 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 12 and 14, And I thank Christ Jesus our Lord, who hath enabled me, for that he counted me faithful, put, putting me into the ministry, who was before, here it is, a blasphemer and a persecutor and injurious. But I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly in unbelief and the grace of our Lord was exceeding abundant with faith and love which is in Christ Jesus 1 Timothy 1 12 to 14 Paul was a blasphemer he was a sinner and he was a great sinner he was a murderer and yet God showed him the grace and the mercy William Barclay again a liberal but I don't agree with his liberalism I'm a conservative evangelical says but in the ancient world the barriers were complete. No one had ever dreamed that God's grace and privileges and love were for all people. And the gospel is for all people, whatever race, whatever condition, whatever sexuality, the gospel is for all, that we can all be saved by grace, by the undeserved mercy of God. 1 Timothy chapter 1 15 this is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners and of, uh, of whom I am the chief 1 Timothy 1 15 Paul saw himself as the chief of sinners yet God showed him the grace and the love what is available to you today is the grace of God you might have been a Christian for a long time and you've sinned and you've made mistakes and you're wondering whether God forgives you. He forgives you if you repent. You might be a person who's never believed in Jesus. You've never believed in him at all in your life. And then one day you realize that you're a sinner, that you've sinned and that the things that you've done have been wrong. And you wonder whether God can forgive you. Paul said, I am the chief of sinners. He knew the grace of God. God forgave him of all his sin. And God wants to forgive you today, no matter how much you have sinned, no matter how bad you have been, no matter how many mistakes you have made, however big mistakes they have made, or little mistakes, or whatever mistakes, or however you have failed, God wants to show you his forgiveness and mercy in Jesus Christ as you trust in him. For that's where God's love is. It's in the grace of God. It's in the undeserved mercy of God. It's in what Christ did for you on that cross. And I repeat again, Paul was a murderer. Paul was a thief. Paul was a sinner. Paul was the chief of sinners. And yet God showed him his grace and love. And then commissioned him to go and preach the gospel of grace. That's what preaching is. It's one beggar preaching to another beggar. It's the grace of God come to you and me, shown to you and me, that we pass on to other people. It is the amazing grace of God. How many times did Jesus spend with those who were kicked out of society? How many times did he see, it? how many times was he with the tax collectors who were seen as the scum of society. How many times was he with prostitutes, with lepers who were seen as the scum of society? Because Christ is a servant 
of grace, a minister of grace. He is the king of grace. He is the savior who brings grace. And you may feel like a leper today. You may feel that you've messed up. You may feel that you can feel the spots of decay of sin within your life. But I want to tell you that our Savior is a Savior of grace. And He will wash you and cleanse you. It says in Isaiah, He will wash you. He will make you whiter than snow. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. And the grace of God will cover you in Psalm 51. Create in me a clean heart, O God, says the psalmist. And Christ wants to clean you and give you a new heart and a new way, a new vision of grace. My friend, if you're stuck in the past and the record is going round and round and round of all your failures and mistakes, get off the record, break the needle, get into grace. It's new grace today. It is the grace of God that covers you today, that cleanses you today, that washes you today, that shows you that you're clean in Christ and His blood today. It is the merciful, wonderful grace of God. Do not be condemned today if you come under the grace of God. Then we look at the riches of Christ. What else has God for you? He has the grace of His grace for you. And then He has the riches of Christ for you. In Ephesians 3, 8, Unto me, who am less than the least of all the saints, is the grace given that I should preach among the Gentiles. Here it is. The unsearchable riches of Christ. The unsearchable riches of Christ. That I should preach the unsearchable Riches of Christ. Tosini, a, a, a musician, was taking people around a museum of great artists, great, great musicians. And as he took these people around the museum, he saw Beethoven's piano and he said this, Gentlemen, I am nothing. You are nothing. Beethoven is everything. Gentlemen, I am nothing. You are nothing. Beethoven is everything. If the Apostle Paul was here today, he would say, Gentlemen, I am nothing. You are nothing. Jesus Christ is everything. You see, if you have Christ, you have all things. In Colossians chapter 2, verse 9, For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Colossians 2 9. The great train robbery. There they stole the money in the 60s. They left the trains. They went to a farm and they emptied all the money in the, in the, in the, in the, in the farm, farmhouse. And they looked at all the money and they thought they were rich. But he says here the unsearchable riches of Christ. Christ has greater riches for you. Not physical riches, not riches in money, but in spiritual riches. Because in Christ is the fullness of the Godhead. If you know Christ, you know God. If you have God, you have all things. All that God owns, all that God is, in all his immensity and power, in all his greatness and majesty. A God who upholds all the universe and the galaxies within his hand. The God who upholds all that, when you believe in Christ, you have all things. You have the unsearchable riches of Christ. You will spend eternity and eternity discovering the greatness of God through Christ. In Acts chapter 19, 17 and 19, it says, And this was known to all the Jews and Greeks also dwelling in Ephesus. A fear fell on them all, and the name of the Lord Jesus was magnified. And many that believed came and confessed and showed their deeds. Many of them also, which used curious arts, brought their books together and burned them. And before all men, and they counted the price of them and found 50,000 pieces of silver. Acts chapter 19, verse 17 to 19. The apostle 
was preaching the gospel in this town, in this city. And people began to be saved and brought all their magic art books. And it came to 50,000 pieces of silver in, 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 in how much it was. And they burnt all these books. It's just an aside, it wasn't the apostles who instigated the burning, it was the people themselves. And so my friends, they left their magic arts, they left the occult to find Christ and follow him. The occult is big business, it's booming business today. Come and get your palm read, come and talk to a soothsayer. But it cannot be equal to the riches of Christ because Christ dealt with your sin, my friend. And that is unbelievably rich for you if you appropriate it by faith. 1 John 1 7 And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. The blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin. You'll be forgiven and cleansed and washed under the blood of Christ. Ephesians chapter 2, 13, but now in Christ Jesus, who sometimes were far off, made nigh by the blood of Christ. Romans 10, 13, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. When Christ died on that cross and shed his blood for you on that cross, he invites you to come and believe in him. That invitation is for you today. Isaiah 55, 7, let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thought. Let him return to the Lord, and the Lord, and and He will love, pity, and mercy him, and to our God, for He will multiply to him His abundant pardon. The unsearchable riches of Christ is this: that Christ's blood was divine and human blood, and that divine and human blood was shed for you on that cross when He was nailed to the cross, when He had a crown of thorns on His head. When he was dying there, he was dying and being crushed for you. He was dying in your place that you may live. He was dying so that you could survive the wrath of God on the last day. He came and he was crushed for you, my friend. And why was he crushed? He was crushed because he loved you. He was crushed because he needed to be crushed if you were to be saved. And he loved you with an everlasting love. And he loved you with a conquering love. And no one will ever know how much he took the wrath to come upon himself. And if you want to know the living God, you come through that blood of Christ. You come through and trust in the blood of Jesus Christ. And know him as your Lord and Savior. But it's through that blood. That is the riches of Christ. Through the blood is redemption. Through the blood is the way to heaven. Through the blood is the way to God. He has made a way through the divine human blood of Christ. It is rich beyond compare. You could be a billionaire and you could spend every penny you had as a billionaire and say, God, I give you all my money and it would not get you into heaven even if you spent 20 billion pounds and said God I pay you 20 billion pounds let me into heaven you will never get in but the moment you believe in the precious blood of Christ you are in you are saved you are born again you are coming to the kingdom you are redeemed you are a child of God why because God's blood was divine and human blood it was the blood of Christ precious unadorned with any sin it was pure it was holy it was the perfect Lamb of God sacrificed for you and it was the only way to heaven the only way to God through the blood of Christ and may demons or may anybody come against the cross of Christ and they will fall and be judged under the mighty grace of God for in that grace is the gospel of his blood it's the blood that saves it's the blood that opens the way. It's the blood that lets you win. It's the blood that's precious, my friend. Because it's Jesus' blood. It's the Lamb of God. When John the Baptist saw Jesus, he said, Behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. And he is the Lamb of God who gave himself for you that you may live and rejoice in him. And it's at the blood, it's at the cross that we have to come. 
And if you want to know God, you go to the cross. There's no other way. You can try science and philosophy and religion, but until you go to the cross, you will not find God. There your sin was dealt with. There the blood of Christ was shed for you. There he gave all for you that you might live. There is life at the cross. There is hope at the cross. There is the way at the cross. There is the meaning at the cross. Paul said, we preach Christ crucified. And that's our message today. In any age, there must be the preaching of the cross and the blood of Christ, my friend. It's the only way to be saved. And then thirdly, the love of God for you. The love of God for you. Ephesians chapter 3, 18, 19. You may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth, the length, the depth, the height, and to know the love of Christ which passeth knowledge that you might be filled with all the fullness of God. Hallelujah. Ephesians 3, 18, 19 might be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth the, and, and length and depth and height and to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge that you might be filled with all the fullness of God. There is a height and a depth of, to the love of God. There is more to learn of the love of God, my friend. Imagine if you was in debt $20,000 or £20,000 and someone paid your debt off that night. How amazing would that be? Well, Christ paid your debt at the cross. John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Romans 5.8, But God shows his love for us in that while we were yet still sinners, Christ died for us. But God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Romans 5, 8. Oh, my friends, Burns is coming home today. Burns is coming home to his roots. Burns is coming back to the old time preaching. Burns has come home. He's come home to his calling. What is my calling? My calling is to preach the word of God, my friends. And I'm home today. And I'm coming to preach the word of God. And no devil, no demons, no atheist, nobody is ever going to stop me from preaching the word of God. I'm home. I'm home. I'm home. I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. I'm back in the saddle of the preacher of the gospel. I'm back in the saddle for preaching the word of God. No more attacking the atheist. It's now preaching the word of God. Preaching the Jesus Christ. Serving the Lord in the power of His Spirit and preaching the Word of God. I'm back, my friends. I'm back in the saddle and preaching the Word of God. Hallelujah. But God shows His love for us in that while we were yet still sinners, Christ died for us. The love of God in Christ dying for you, giving His life for you, shedding His blood for you, pouring Himself out for you. That is the love of God for you today. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 14 and I think it's 14 and five, uh, 15 or 4, no, two, Ephesians chapter 2 verse 4 and 5. But God being rich in mercy because of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ by grace, you have been saved. Though we are dead, he has made us alive. Do you know before we came to know God we were dead spiritually? That we couldn't have known God without Him touching us by the Holy Spirit. And then He opened our eyes to see the cross. Because He's a God of wooing, a God of drawing, a God of love who wants to bring us into the kingdom and He brings us in by the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit quickens us and opens our hearts and minds to the truth and we see the grace of God. We see the love of God. Oh, my friends, the love of God quickens us, uh, opens our eyes, shows us that we're sinners, shows us that we do not deserve grace, and then shows us that God is a God of grace and gives us that salvation. The work of the Holy Spirit reveals to us the revelation of God and the Holy Spirit. 
You can never even know God. You can never understand God without the revelation of the Holy Spirit. Without the Spirit of God showing you, you can understand nothing. You can talk about philosophy and theology. You can talk about all the arguments that you want as an, a skeptic, but you will never ever know God. Never come to see who He is until the Spirit of God opens your eyes and gives you a vision of the love of God in the cross. And when you see the love of God in the cross, it is electrifying. It is magnifying. It is awesome. It is wonderful. It is glorious. He is Christ the Savior who gave himself for us. And there is nothing in this world, nothing on this planet, nothing in skepticism can equal the wonderful love of Christ that he has given us in the cross. Nothing can compare to that. To see what he did for you at the cross is wonderful. And he quickened us. He quickened us so that we may see his love and oh my friend my dear skeptical friend I know that you are into your your arguments against Christianity and I know that you sit on your shows and I know that you're convinced that you are right my friend you are not right in no way in a million years are you right you don't know what you're missing you're missing Christ and all that he has for you you're missing the real love of God. You're missing the presence of God. You're missing the knowledge of God. You're missing the love of God. You're missing this knowledge of God. And you cannot get it by pure intellectualism. You can bang on the door uh, all your life. You can be on your skeptical shows and criticizing Christianity and coming up with the most clever arguments against Christianity. But when God opens your heart, when you see him in what he did for you at the cross by a revelation of the Holy Spirit, you see something that you cannot get by pure argumentation. You get a, a vision and a, a sense of the greatness and the love of God, of peace and a joy and a love that puzzles all understanding, a joy and a love that gives you vigor and strength in your heart for the day. It's a love that is awesome. It is a love that is vast. It is a love that is great. It is a love that is joy. It is a love that is fulfilling. It is a love that fills you. It is a love that it passes all knowledge. It is the love of God in Christ, our Savior. And it is wonderful. Wonderful. And you, my dear skeptical friend, are missing this. And my dear Christian friend, jump in and enjoy your God through Christ. Jump in and revel in the love of God for you today. Jump in and pray for one another that your eyes and understanding as a Christian may expand so that you may know the unsearchable riches of Christ. It is not amazing that you are saved today and that you can know God today and you are with God today, safe in his loving arms. What a wonderful God we have. What a wonderful Savior we have. We are blessed today as children of God. God walks with us and is with us and we know him through Christ who gave himself and shed his blood for us on that cross. 1 John chapter 4 verse 9 and 11. In this the love of God was made manifest among us. That God sent his only so that we might live through him. In this is love. Not that we have loved God. But that he loved us and sent his son to be a propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. 1 John 4, 9 and 11. He was a propitiation for our sins. He took the wrath that you and I deserved. He took the judgment that you and I deserved. He was punished for you and me. So, my friend, 
We have seen the grace of God for you. We have seen the riches of Christ for you. And we've seen the love of God for you. Paloma Faith, in her song, wrote this. Say I wouldn't care if you walked away. But any time you're there, I'm begging you to stay. When you come close, I just tremble. And every time and every time you go, it is like a knife that cuts right through my soul. We do not trust in Christ. It will be a, like a knife that cuts through our soul. In Matthew chapter 25, verse 46, they will go away to eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. To Thessalonians 1, 9, things will be they will be punished with everlasting destruction and shut out from the presence of the Lord and from the majesty of his power. Matthew 13, 50, and throw them into the fiery furnace where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth, Matthew 13, 50. Now all this teaching about hell and all the rest of it, many of us, Many of us are perturbed, Christian and non-Christian, by the doctrine of hell. But what is hell? Hell is distant from God. When you come to know God and know His presence, and you move into the things of God, <coughs> you're moving into His presence and His love and His peace, His shalom. You move towards God through Christ. You're moving into peace and joy. You're moving into the presence and love of God. You're moving into complete peace. But if you move away from God, if you move away from peace, if you move away from joy, then you're moving into darkness. And hell is really the absence of God. It is to know for sure that you are never going to be with God again. That you're never going to know his life. You're never not going to know his joy. You're never going to know his smile. And you will be weeping and you will be gnashing your teeth because you're saying to yourself, I'm shut out for eternity. I'm in hell. I will never, ever, 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 ever get to know God I'll never get to see him I'll never get to be with him I'll never ever know him and you will be in hell and that's what it means but there'll be those who are in heaven for ages upon ages and ages upon ages and ages in his presence enjoying him knowing him loving him Knowing more love, knowing more love, knowing more love and more love poured into the hearts, knowledge upon knowledge upon knowledge, expanding throughout the universe for billions of years, knowing this love of God, knowing this peace, and it goes on and on, and it's awesome and awesome, and it never stops, and your heart expands more and more and more of the great knowledge of God. Hell will be a place where you just know only emptiness. And you'll be weeping and you'll be stamping your feet forever and ever. That's why the martyrs died in joy. That's why, if you read the book of Hebrews, the Christians were being persecuted. And the Hebrew writer, I think it's Paul, but maybe it was another writer, maybe Apollos, but I think it was Paul. That's why in the book of Hebrews, the writer exhorts the Christians to keep going because he knows what's for them. That's why 1 and 2 Peter was written for Christians who were struggling, because he knew what was for them. That's why... When Polycarp was crucified, uh, was was sentenced to death, and Ignatius, 
they had joy in God. That's why Perpetua, when she was martyred, she had joy for God. That's why the whole Christian church that was persecuted and died, all those martyrs at Leon's, where, where Irenaeus had to go to Rome, and he was a, he was a catechumist, he, 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 he taught the catechism, he was not a bishop at the time, and he goes to Rome, and he comes back, and the Christians have been martyred, I mean literally butchered to death, they were put in hot iron chairs and set on fire, they were then thrown to dogs and eaten, and then as they were eaten, the families could not even take their bones, the bones were ground and thrown into the dust. Why could they put up with that? Because they knew the love of God. They knew the riches of God. They knew the living God. They knew heaven and earth is in Christ. They knew that all is in Him. They knew that in Christ is everything. They, they tasted the things of God. They knew the living God. And they were assured of the blessings of God. That's why. That's why you look at the history of the church. Read Fox's Book of Martyrs when you get a chance. Read it, my friend. Read it. Read it and weep. Read it and be inspired. Read it, my friend. Do you realize that the book of Mark was written round about 64 AD. Do you realize what was happening at that time when Mark was writing the gospel of Mark to encourage Christians? He was writing from Italy. And as he wrote that book from Italy, Nero was putting Christians on stakes and setting them alight as torches in his garden. So when Mark takes the pen and he's writing to encourage people to read the gospel of Mark, he is writing to encourage the brethren in such fiery persecution. Why could he do it? What did the gospel of Mark do and achieve? How could it be that Christians could be put on torches and set a light and go and do it, be done with joy? I'll tell you why. Because they knew Christ. They knew his joy. They knew his peace. They knew he was altogether lovely. They knew that he was the prince of love. He was the king of love. He was the king of kings. He was the joy, the omega, the alpha. He was everything. And they had met the living God. They had met reality. They had met love. They had met power. They had met joy. They had met Christ, the savior. The savior of the world. Who every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. They had met the Lord in reality and power. When they were thrown on torches, they could sing with joy and die with grace. And you today, as a believer, have been given the grace of God. God knows how much you've messed up. God knows how much you've failed. God knows how much you're going to fail, but he's given you the grace, and he forgives you. Now, you've got to walk in that grace, but he's given you a task as a believer to go and preach the grace of God. If your church is not preaching the grace of God, it's not a church. It's just a social club. You should be out there preaching the grace of God. You should be out in the highways preaching the grace of God. The unsearchable riches of Christ. As a believer, you should be going on and on and on. You should be moving on. There's no three steps backwards, four steps backwards. It's got to be forward, forward, forward. Move on, move on, move on. Seek the grace of God. Get more of God. Desire more of God. Thirst for God. Hunger for God. Get into the Word. Come on, move it, move it, move it. Go forward, go forward. There's more to learn. There's more to learn. There's more to learn. Are you moving forward, searching, plundering the riches of Christ? And thirdly, the unspeakable love of God. How many times in, in, in your life have you thought, God isn't with me, or God won't help me here, or has God got a plan for me? My friend, God loves you. He gave all in his son, and he's going to be with you today. He's going to guide you today. He's got it all in hand. You don't have to be worried. You don't have to be concerned. 
He's got it all in hand. He loves you. He'll guide you and he'll lead you. The unsearchable riches of Christ and the great love of God. We should be praying for believers and young converts and believers that their minds and hearts would be expanded in the knowledge of God, in the love of God, in the unsearchable riches of Christ, in understanding the grace of God. And for you who are not a believer today, you don't believe for whatever reasons, intellectual reasons, I don't know, personal reasons, what, whatever issues it is, you, you, you don't believe, and that's it. All I want to say to you is this. Whatever you have now, it is absolutely nothing compared to Jesus Christ. That your confidence in whatever you're believing at the moment is misplaced. That your confidence needs to be in Christ. You can look at religion and not religion. You can look at the church, church and not the church. You can look at all these things and knock them. But you're a fool if you're not Christ. Because Christ was the Son of God, is the Son of God, and died for you and rose again. Your confidence is not misplaced if you put it in him. So you might be angry at the church. You might be angry at your parents that they tried to ram religion down your throat. I don't know. You might be angry at the pastors that they didn't answer your intellectual questions and you you were disgusted with their, their, their intellectual dishonesty. I don't know. But I do know this. But when you meet Christ, everything pales into significant insignificance. Because he'll answer your intellectual questions. He is the prince of intellect. He is the king of intellect. He'll answer the hurts that you've had from maybe Christians or maybe your parents. Christ wants to engage with you and meet with you, but you've got to be willing and be open to meet with him. That requires you to seek. It requires you to be open. It requires you to read the Bible, read the Gospel of John. It requires you to sit under teaching, It requ Bible teaching. It requires you to read Christian books. I guarantee if you are a skeptic today or you're an unbeliever today, you start to read the Bible, Gospel of John for example, you start to open yourself up to the Bible, to Bible teachers, and you start to search and, and you allow God to speak to you, I guarantee he will speak and you will know his voice. And you'll come to know the Saviour. Alright. Well, we've preached a lot. <coughs> I hope you've found it a blessing so we're going to call it a day I might uh, do something later on tonight I don't know uh, might preach again later on tonight uh, pray for me um, I do need uh, rest from YouTube I keep saying it but I do need rest uh, but I'm enjoying this I'm enjoying preaching I love it I just I just really really love it I need to do more of this on YouTube so pray that I get time in a few weeks months ahead and be able to preach more because I love it absolutely love it and um, just pray that the good things and the mess are made on YouTube with the atheists the good things and the bad things that God will turn it around and make all things work together for, for them that love God. Um, pray for the evangelism and the outreach that I do uh, in other places. Um, excuse me. Pray that God would guide us as a team as we go about different places uh, to evangelize. And um, pray that my time in study and preparation would be good. Pray for God's blessing uh, on my life, uh, if you would. Pray the seeds that we sow uh, to different people will be blessed. And uh, just pray that my ministry, that God will guide me as to how to go forward in my ministry. Pray that I would have a listening heart concerning what God wants me to do. So, let's close in prayer. If you're not a believer today, please consider um, what I've said. Think about it and I hope it blesses you and uh, I hope that you come to know the Lord because uh, knowing him is the best thing okay so let's pray father we thank you for your love and your grace today and we give you the praise and the glory 
And Father, I just pray those who do not know you today, uh, open their hearts to trust in you, Lord. Those who do know you today, expand their minds, expand their vision of what you have for them today. May they really go through this day with a real sense of your presence and blessing. Fill them with your Holy Spirit, I pray in Jesus' name and for your glory. Amen. 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 Oh, I just just so encouraged preaching today. Oh, they felt like the old days. So, um, hope you found that a blessing and God bless you. Take care.